uh, it can be more graceful and easier. So those are the big things that are exciting me at the moment. Well, you know, as you were describing the, the talk show, for instance, I was thinking, you know, that's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty big goal, to, mm-hmm. you know, to speak to millions of people. And um, I was sitting at my desk a couple of years ago, I guess it was now, and thinking, okay, how can I take Centerpoint to the next level? What, what do I need to do to expand uh, the number of people who know about Holosync and are using it and, and benefiting from it? And, and I tend to ask myself a lot of questions. And that's the way I get information, really, is I ask the question, and then one way or another, the information you know, comes to me to answer the question. And very quickly after asking that question, I thought, what I need to do is get to know all of the big centers of influence, uh, in, uh, particularly in personal growth, so that they can get on board knowing how wonderful Holosync is and what it does. Well, it, it wasn't very long at all before uh, you invited me to be in this Transformational Leadership Council group and several other things like that, uh, some things that Marshall Thurber is doing and some, some, some other things came to me, just sort of almost fell into my lap. Just like you say, it, it, was, it was really an effortless type of thing. And since I had that idea, I would say that at least 25 major centers of influence have started using Holosync and promoting it to their, uh, you know, to the people that they are influential around. So that's just an example from my life of, of the way it can be effortless if you know how to focus your mind in the right way. No, oh, it's so true. I the example out of my life is when my book, The Success Principles, How to Get From Where You Are to Where You Want to Be, came out. I was thinking, I need to get national television exposure and, uh, you know, it's either got to be Oprah or Today Show, and that's a one-time thing. But how do I get constant, you know, exposure that goes on over time? Because not everyone watches those shows every day. And um, so I just kept visualizing it, not knowing how. I didn't have the money to go out and buy $40 million worth of advertising. Uh, but we got a, about, a, I think, 30 days later, we got an email addressed to info at jackcanfield.com, not even, like, to my name or address. And it was uh, Carlton Sheets, who does the uh, No Money Down Real Estate uh, programs, and he uh, was asking if I would come on and, and do a introduction for his 20th anniversary uh, infomercial, which he was going to buy $40 million worth of airtime to promote. And I said, you betcha, because <laughs> it was going to have me and mention my book and all that stuff and uh, be in markets all over America all the time and you know creating brand recognition for the book and for myself and so forth. So, uh, and that just came out of the blue, we, we, we could call it. But the fact is, I believe I created that by simply focusing on what I wanted, which was television exposure. Yeah, if uh, the, the big struggle for me, I was just, I'm, I'm writing an article right now for our next issue of our newsletter, Mind Chatter, and I've taken a few quotes out of some letters people have sent me, and then I'm talking about kind of what I see in each of these people that's causing them to write me about how miserable their life is and in every case it's that they're focusing on what they do not want pretty much automatically on autopilot and not focusing on what they want and in some cases they don't they they even claim to not know what they want so i really i continually tell people that i think really the key to everything is what you focus your mind on and most people just don't understand how powerful their mind is and that they're already manifesting exactly what they're focusing on. Yeah, I always say to my students, if you want to know what you're thinking, look at what you're creating around you. And what you thought in the past is creating your current reality. And if you want your future to be different, you've got to create different thoughts because what you're currently doing will only produce what you're currently getting. And that's what most people don't realize is that they keep recreating the same reality over and over And they think they're stuck, but the fact is they're sticking themselves by maintaining the same habits of thought and imagery and behavior. And it's not easy to change without some kind of external um, support because we're basically habit-driven people. And you can get so habitual, you're in a trance. And it takes a coach or a book or a program like Holosync or a training like mine or yours to, to break people out of that, to kind of almost shake them awake and then give them the tools 
of repetition uh, that your programs do and my programs is to take them to deeper levels of consciousness where they can think a higher level thought and expose themselves to the deeper creativity that already exists inside of them, but they're numbed out to, so that they can, as you said, create a better life with less effort. Well, you know, one of the things that I've noticed, and I know you've noticed this too, is that people will go to a, a seminar or a training, and they'll leave with seminar high, and, and they've got the, the best of intentions then for going out and creating whatever it is they want, but then within a, you know, a short period of time, a, a week or so, their old habit of focusing on what they don't want more most of the time reasserts itself, and that whole uh, intention that they had kind of goes away. And it, it it seems to me that a good seminar is one in which the the seminar leader manages to get the people that are at the seminar to focus on what they want. But a great seminar is one that manages to to get people to continue to focus on what they want after they leave. And I think that's one of the things about about your work that that makes it stand head and shoulders above, you know, higher than a lot of other people's is because I think you're able to do that. Can you give some explanation of how you try to make this more permanent rather than Sure. Uh I think one of the things that we do that's unusual is that we provide people with a, a mastermind group or a set of what we call accountability partners so that as you leave the seminar, it's kind of like, you know, everyone makes New Year's resolutions to exercise. Uh, it's much easier to keep them if you sign up for a gym and you have a partner you're going to go with and a coach you're going to meet when you get there because then you've got people saying, come on, let's go, let's get in our suit, let's do 50 push-ups, whatever. And, you know, on our own, we would tend to fall away from that. And so we, we, we teach people how to create and maintain a support system that keeps them focused on their goals. We also teach them a set of habits that we expect them to do for a minimum of 40 days because research shows that if you can keep something going for 40 days, you're more unlikely to keep it going. And then we also encourage them to keep it going for a whole quarter, three months, if, if they really want to be sure. And so what happens is uh, things like the mirror exercise, where every night at the end of the day before they go to bed, they look in the mirror, and out loud they talk to themselves and appreciate themselves for everything they did that day. And what that does over a 40-day period, it creates a habit of self-affirmation, self-validation, uh, focusing on what you did do rather than what you didn't do. And so it creates some new mental habits. Everyone leaves with a set of affirmations, which they put on three-by-five cards or put on their screensaver that they have to read every day. Uh, we ask them to do that for an entire year. Uh, then every, once a week they're talking to their mastermind group. I recommend that people hire a coach uh, and, you know, study with the best, as you know, and that's why you and I are both creating coaching programs. One of my friends said uh, training without coaching uh, is entertainment. And I think there's a certain truth in that because a lot of people can relate to going and getting that training high you talked about, and then a month later it's like they were never there. And so uh, we need that. Once we get the breakthrough, we need to sustain it. And so it's like teaching a kid. Uh, you don't expect them with one intervention to develop a new habit, like keeping their elbows off the table or chewing with their mouth closed or going to bed on time or studying with the radio off. But if you reinforce that over and over and over for days and months, eventually they internalize it and it becomes a habit. And what I'm looking to do is create what I call habits of success, disciplines of success that become second nature. And when you've got that, if you develop four a year, as Dan Sullivan taught you and I, at the end of 10 years, you've got 40 new success habits. You're, you're, you're home free. Absolutely. You know, that this whole idea of, of holding people by the hand until they really make it a habit is why I answer, you know, you and I have talked before about how many emails I answer. All the people in my online courses have uh, unlimited email access to me. And uh, many times in different clothing, they keep asking me the same question. And it, sometimes I have to answer it 10 times before they really get the principle I'm talking about. Sometimes it's 20 times. But eventually they go, oh, I get it. I can, I can generalize this to other situations. I don't have to keep asking this. So I, I agree. I think that's a really important part of this is, is somehow supporting people while they're in that transition period. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to ask you. I know that uh, I know that one of your mentors was W. Clement Stone, who uh, some people probably uh, recognize that name who are listening. But uh, uh, W. Clement Stone 
co-wrote a book with napoleon hill, success through positive mental attitude,